Today I'm trying a new method of rooting fig cuttings called the shoebox method. As a medium, I'm using screen pine bark nuggets because they have excellent drainage and antifungal properties, and I've had poor success rooting in mediums heavy with peat moss or cocoa core. I'm screening out the large particles with a piece of garden fence. By doing this, it leaves me with the fine nuggets, which is exactly what I want for rooting. I'm then transferring the pine bark fines into a roasting pan to bake in my oven and kill off any bug eggs and fungi living in the mulch. I'm going to bake them in my oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. Once baked, they go into a container to cool off to room temperature. And I'll pre-moisten them with water to speed up the process. We want them to be moist but not wet. While the pine bark fines cool off, we will label our cuttings with a paint pen and we'll wrap the tops with parafilm to preserve the cuttings internal moisture. By the way, all of the items in this video are linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description if you need any of them. Then we will paint the nodes of the cuttings that will be exposed to the rooting medium with a mascara brush dipped in Clonex rooting gel or the rooting hormone of your choice. We will fill our shoe box with the damp pine bark fines. Then we will press the pine bark fines into a two to three inch thick shelf to place our cuttings. Ensure you leave two inches of spacing all around each cutting so when they root, the roots don't entangle each other and they'll have enough room to grow freely. Then press the damp pine bark mulch onto each cutting to lock them into place. Press firmly so each cutting is secured and making good contact with the mulch layer. Ensure the cuttings are buried at least under 3 inches of mulch before you place your next row of cuttings to give each cutting enough space to root without being entangled with each other. Place another row of cuttings with the same spacing as the previous row. Secure each cutting with firmly compacted mulch. Build the mulch layer at least 3 inches thick. You may place as many rows of cuttings as your container size allows. Large containers can root huge quantities of cuttings. Place your box of cuttings in indirect sunlight where the tips of the cuttings are facing the window to receive that indirect sunlight. Place the box on a seedling heat mat wide enough to fit the entire width of the box. Use a seedling heat mat thermostat to keep the heat source at 76 degrees Fahrenheit. I find cuttings root best between 73 and 78 degrees Fahrenheit, and 76 Fahrenheit works well for me. It's warm enough to stimulate growth without promoting rot. Place the thermostat temperature probe into the center of the pine bark for an accurate temperature measurement. Place the lid on the shoebox to hold in the warmth and the humidity. You must remove the lid every day to let fresh air in. Otherwise, you risk creating an anaerobic environment that promotes rot. You cannot forget this step. Check your shoebox daily to ensure your pine bark hasn't dried out. It's Saturday, February 13th, and it's been only 18 days since I put these fig cuttings in this rooting chamber, and every single day I just open the lid, maybe two or three times a day, and I blow some fresh air in there, uh, just to make sure there's always a fresh supply of oxygen. And when I woke up this morning and I looked, I happened to notice already there are roots forming in the pine bark mulch. You can see them here, here, and here. And I'm very surprised that I'm at this point already because it's been barely two and a half weeks. My initial goal of this rooting container was to only pre-root them and just start the rooting. I don't want them to form very large roots because what I've heard from people is once they form large roots, they're very difficult to up-pot and there are huge losses because the long roots become very fragile. So we're at the point now that we see some roots, we need to start removing this pine bark mulch and hope that our root nodes are still very small because we want to up-pot them before the roots get too long and breakable. So right in front of me, there's a wheelbarrow full of homemade potting mix that I made to up-pot my fig trees, and I've showed you how to make this mix before, and I will link to the video above. The only difference is in the video above, I used cocoa core, 
as the base mix. Here I had to use peat moss because I couldn't find any cocoa core in stores. So really this is just peat moss and potting soil that I mixed together with a little bit of 555 organic fertilizer and a dusting of bone meal. And then I poured in a few pots full of boiling water to sterilize it and to hydrate it and then mixed everything together well. And then over here you can see what the fig cuttings look like. Uh, some of them have started to bud and leaf out. They all look pretty nice. Um, very little dehydration or desiccation because there was so much humidity in here. So I'm going to try my best to up pot these. And then right next to that, I have a, a second little tub. These were cuttings that failed for me, rooting the old fashioned way. Um, so I cut new ends off of them. They hadn't rotted yet. So these are five days newer than than these. So uh, this bin right here has been rooting for 18 days. This has only been 13 days. So I expect very little movement on this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly pull off this pine bark mulch. I'm going to move it into this bucket over here and I'm going to save it because any cuttings that did not root, and I expect many of them have not rooted yet because it's only been 18 days, I'm going to repurpose that pine bark mulch, put it all back in this tub, and then all of the cuttings that had not rooted yet are going to go back in there. Now, in my opinion, the key to success in this whole process is going to be uh, moving very slowly, being very gentle, and to try and disturb things as little as possible. So I'm going to gently take small handfuls of pine bark mulch off the top and I'm going to drop it into the bucket to reuse later. And right here, here is one of the first cuttings. You can already see there is a little root that's forming in there. So that right there is a root. So we want to be very, very careful not to disturb that root. Look at that right there. That is incredible. Yes, those are some great roots. And this is a variety called uh, Purpura Verde, which uh, I got off of FigBid, it just sounded pretty cool. So I'm going to do this one cutting at a time for up potting because we want to be gentle. So I will show you how to do that. So we will up pot this cutting in one of these four inch by nine inch tree pots. And the key here is going to be as gentle as possible. Now I have labeled it with a white paint marker. So that is important as well because you don't want to get these mixed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this very light, fluffy and loamy potting mix that I made that's already pre-moistened to just where we want it to be. And for the record, um, when you pre-moisten soil, a uh, potting mix rather, um, it should be to the point where when you squeeze it together, it holds together into a ball like a snowball. But if you squeeze it tightly, water does not drip out. And I'm squeezing this and there's no water drip. That is perfect. So I'm going to fill this up um, about, mm, maybe about a third of the way and I'm going to just shake it to get it to tamp down. And then I'm going to place this cutting in there very gently. I do not want to break any of those roots and I'm just going to backfill by hand as gently as possible. And I'm not even going to tamp this down really because I don't want to apply any uh, pressure to the medium because if I apply, if I apply pressure, I could break the roots and we do not want that. That would be the worst thing that could happen because these roots, when they are very white like that, they are very young and they are very fragile. Um, you really shouldn't apply significant pressure to these fig roots until they kind of orange some. When they become orange, they harden off a bit. So I'm just going to give this a little, a little shake like this just to settle it down and make sure that there are no voids in there. I will press down on the edges ever so slightly. And then this fig cutting has been up potted. That's as far as we are going to go here. And uh, later I will probably add about an ounce or two of water uh, to hydrate this a little bit more. 
and the adding of the water will actually help compact the soil some. But I want this mix to stay light and loamy so the roots have no problem traversing it. So I'm going to do this for every fig cutting that has rooted for me. Here's another fig cutting right here. This is called WXC016, but this has a nice root structure on it as well. Raspberry cream. We have to be really careful with this root right here. This one's like being on an archaeological dig. It's so hard to get out of here because there's so many roots. Holy smokes, look at this one. That is incredible. Here is a rare variety called Pisaludo. WXC14. Another Purpura Verde. Bass's favorite is just starting to get some root nodes on it. So we're going to give this one just a few more days. Parachal or Parhal Ramada is just starting to get its root bumps. So we will expect that to root out probably within the next week or so. So I have seven beautifully rooted cuttings right here that I've transferred into pots. The cuttings that have not yet shown any activity or just starting to show the first bumps that will become root nodes have been placed back into the moist pine bark from which they came. And now we're going to check this smaller container that I started several days after the other one. And I don't see a whole lot of activity in here, except for one bud on this mutant cover uh, cutting. And look, it's starting to show its very first couple of roots. Maybe I shouldn't have disturbed that. It's starting to show some root nodes right there, forming everywhere. However, uh, with these couple of bumps, I think I'm actually going to up-pot this because I like the way it looks. So it's Tuesday, April 27th, and I think I'm finally ready to show an update on all of these fig cuttings that I tried to root using the shoebox method. And I had very mixed success. Now, in terms of actually rooting the fig cuttings, just about every single cutting inside the fig shoebox rooted with nearly 100% success. I was either in the 90s or had almost a perfect 100%. So the shoebox was an incredibly successful method at making the, uh, the fig cuttings develop root nodes. The problem is the up-potting process. And what I heard was, while the shoebox is great at controlling conditions and forcing fig rooting, it's very difficult to up-pot them and they suffer high losses when it comes to the change of the environment. And that is more or less what I found. So these are my fig cuttings right here. This is a variety called Purpura Verde. That rooted great. Uh, this is another Purpura Verde. This one rooted great. And this is a third Purpura Verde. So all three of those rooted very easily. I had three small cuttings and they all did great. So that seems to be a very uh, vigorous variety. Then over here I have uh, the Yolo Bypass. That rooted and looks pretty, pretty great and it survived the transition. This is a second Yolo. So uh, Yolo Bypass did very well for me. Both of the cuttings I received rooted. This is a cutting from Harvey. This is called Grigio. This one rooted. It took a long time because it was such a thick and generous cutting, but it does appear to be a success. So we'll chalk that one up to the wind column. This is a Robert's Golden Rainbow that I got from a friend locally. And this one seems to have rooted for me with success. So very happy about that. This is a Cavalieri make that two Cavalieries. So both Cavalieries for me seem to have rooted and developed leaves. So chalk that up as a big win. And this is one of the ones that I'm most excited about. This is a Bass's favorite that I also got from Harvey. This one appears to have rooted for me pretty well as well. It had fantastic root development in the shoe box and it appears to have survived the transition. This right here is a white Madeira number one that um, I'm not quite sure if it's going to make it. It did bud out for me, uh, but we'll see if it makes the transition. This is a cutting from my own tree. Uh, this is a Coldadam Mutant or Mutante. 
So this one appears to have made it. Uh, it's growing very slowly, so hopefully it continues to be successful. But as of now, it appears to be a success, knock on wood. And then we have a Sanguinado that I got from Harvey. It's showing some root, uh, it, sh it did root, and it's showing some bud development. So it should uh, make the transition. Um, all of Harvey's cuttings were so large that they took forever to root, but they all did eventually root. Then I have a WXC019. Uh, this one appears to have rooted successfully as well. I don't see any roots popping out of the bottom of here yet, but it's coming along nicely, and this rooted readily for me as well. Now for the downside. While I did have a lot of successes, I also had a lot of failures. So I have a, a bunch that didn't come to fruition for me. I had a raspberry latte that rooted in the shoebox that failed in the up potting. I have a pisoludo here, which is a heartbreaker. I really wanted that one. It rooted great, but it died in the transition. It started to leaf out and then it just wasted away and, and went into decline. Same thing with a raspberry cream. That's a tough loss right there. I have a WXC 016. Uh, it rooted, but failed on me in the up potting. WXC 014, same story. Uh, and then I have a couple of ones that I guess I labeled with tags that I didn't write in here. So uh, there were a no oh Laurelita. I don't think that one ever rooted for me. That was maybe one of the only ones that didn't root for me in the shoe box, and it just wasted away for me. Um, and there were a couple others that I must have lost the tags, but um, in my experience, uh, the fig shoe box, you can expect 90%, bordering on 100% of them to root in there, but expect to take heavy losses in the transition, somewhere in the 33 to 50% range. And uh, that doesn't sound all that great. Granted, this was my first year doing this, so maybe I did something wrong. When I took my, my cuttings out of, the, uh, out of the shoe box, I then put them in mix, and then I brought them into my greenhouse outside. So maybe it was just too much of a shock to take them and bring them from a really controlled shoe box environment where the relative humidity and the temperatures never changed on a heat mat and a thermostat, and then I carried them into a greenhouse and they got real sunlight and uh, they got fluctuating temperatures in the days and the nights. Maybe that was too much. Maybe I should have went into an up-potted environment and kept them inside to transition. So maybe that was my mistake. Maybe I also made the uh, soil mixture too wet. So for people that have been doing this for a while, I'm sure there are ways to fine tune the process and up your chances of success. And I may have thrown too many variables into the equation. Long story short, I think this method has a tremendous amount of potential if you're able to get them to transition uh, effectively. If you're able to control your mix and the moisture and control the environment you can probably have a really high rate of success doing it this way. It's also one of the most efficient ways of rooting fig cuttings that I've seen because you can buy one Sterilite container and you can put 50 cuttings in there and you can root them all just in the corner of your kitchen table. So you can do a lot of rooting uh, in a small space. The downside to it is um, it's, a, it's an extra step to transition everything once it does root into pots. So that extra step right there for my time and for my money I would probably prefer to skip that extra step and just go right to the direct potting method and do it all in a thermostatically controlled heat mat at exactly 76 degrees Fahrenheit in a controlled location where it gets partial sunlight. I think I would go that way. Um, I think that's my favorite way to do it because it's the least amount of steps. However, it is clear that there's a lot of potential here and it is worth further examination, especially if you have limited space. So that's my analysis of the situation. I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in my garden, as usual, they are all linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. And if you have any questions about this experiment, please ask them in the comments below. Again, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.